With the calendar flipping from June to July, we once again see some official changes become official in college football. Not only is Georgia Tech now officially a member of the Adidas football family, but Liberty University is now officially a FBS program. The 1st of July is when all conference realignment changes become official. Liberty is making a quicker transition from FCS to FBS than most schools typically do due to being granted a waiver from the NCAA. Liberty is choosing to play as an independent, rather than pursue conference membership at this time, which makes their transition easier to handle as long as they can fill their schedule. Although Liberty will begin playing an FBS schedule, this the Flames will not be eligible for any postseason bowl berths until the 2019. Highlights of the first at the FBS level for Liberty will include road games against Auburn, Army, and Virginia. The Flames will also play a rare in-season home-and-home set against New Mexico State, another FBS independent. Liberty's first game as an FBS program will be played at home against Old Dominion on September 1. There is another notable change to the FBS lineup this. Idaho is now officially an FCS program after making a rare drop-down in classification. The Vandals will now play in the Big Sky Conference after previously being a football-only member of the Sun Belt Conference. Follower at Kevin Ong FB The story of a controversial dirty tackle in a college football game in Japan continues to paint a negative image for the football program at Nihon University. A panel of lawyers tasked to investigate the football program responsible for a vicious tackle has determined not only was the hit instructed by the coaches, but players on the team were essentially given a gag order to prevent anyone from singling out those responsible for the tackle of an opposing quarterback. The head coach of the Nihon University program already resigned over the fallout of the hit, but that did not stop a legal investigation over the bizarre controversy. A week after the game with the hit, which you can see here, team officials gathered the entire team for a meeting. In this meeting, it is reported a staff member applied pressure on players to not speak about who was responsible for the planned hit on an opposing player. The reason given for staying silent was to keep the program from being shamed in the public. Well, that clearly did not work out very well. The Nihon program has been slammed with negative publicity and opponents have backed out of games against the university in reaction to the developments of this controversy. Follow at Kevin on KFB with UAB moving forward with their plans to improve their stadium situation in the years to come in Birmingham. South Alabama is looking to fund their own plans for a facility upgrade. According to a report from the Associated Press, South Alabama is asking for $15 million to help fund a $75 million stadium project in Mobile. South Alabama trustees have already approved construction of a new on-campus stadium for the Jaguars football program, but that is contingent on being able to fund the project. South Alabama expects to raise funds through public and private partnerships and hopes it will be able to receive some financial assistance from the city and the taxpayers to make the stadium a reality. According to a report from Walla TV via the app, South Alabama is asking for $10 million from the city and an additional $5 million from taxpayer funds. A vote to approve such funding could come as early as July 10. If South Alabama receives approval for the city funds, the university will contribute $2.5 million back to the city to help renovate Ladd Peebles Stadium, which serves as the current home for South Alabama football. South Alabama will hope the benefit of a brand new stadium will be received well by the city and taxpayers. The school will have to stress the importance of having a new stadium that can host not just South Alabama football games, but also for other events that can draw revenue such as the Dollar General Bowl and the Senior Bowl. Follow at Kevin on KFB former Nebraska back Ben Miles has announced where he is heading next. Miles, the son of former LSU head coach Les Miles, announced via Twitter he is transferring to Texas A.M. Miles sat out the 2017 as a red shirt, but he will still have to sit out a year of college football before he can take the field with Texas A.M. due to NCAA transfer rules. But that doesn't mean he can't start getting himself acclimated to his new surroundings in College Station, Texas. Made it to campus, I am really excited about my opportunity here in College Station. Once again, thank you to the coaches that recruited me to Nebraska and invested in me for a year. This is my next step. I can't wait to get started. Pick.twitter.com slash 6 zelfmt Ben Miles at Ben Miles 2 July 1, 2018 It is worth noting there is some history between Les Miles and Texas AM head coach Jimbo Fisher. 
Fisher was an offensive coordinator at LSU working under Miles in 2005 and 2006. Fisher had previously been the offensive coordinator at LSU under Nick Saban. Fisher left LSU to become the offensive coordinator at Florida State under Bobby Bowden, where he eventually succeeded Bowden to become the head coach of the Seminoles from 2010 through 2017. Follow at Kevin Ong FB Texas lost a little bit of their defensive depth on Saturday ahead of a key on the 40 acres for Tom Herman and staff. Senior linebacker Edwin Freeman confirmed that he was electing to leave the Longhorns as a graduate transfer, first tweeting the news that was later confirmed by the school in a release. Forever a Longhorn and forever grateful to the University of Texas and all coaches for giving me an opportunity to earn a degree and play football at my dream school folded hands dark skin tone sign of the horns dark skin tone grad transfer, Edwin Freeman at F35 June 30, 2018 I will forever be grateful to the University of Texas and all of my coaches for giving me the opportunity to come earn my degree and play football at my dream school, Freeman said in a statement. I especially want to thank all of my teammates who have become my brothers over the last four years. With that said, I've decided to transfer with my degree in hand and pursue an opportunity at another school to finish my football career. Freeman started five games as a sophomore and appeared in 11 more as a junior but couldn't quite the starting rotation on a more permanent basis. A triceps injury held him back in spring practice this year and it seems there was enough distance between him and the other linebackers to cause him to explore his options for one final of college football. The Arlington, Texas native was considered a four-star coming out of high school and generally regarded as a top 200 player at the time back in 2014. He held offers from programs such as Texas A.M., USC, Notre Dame and TCU at the time but DIDNT indicate where he might look at transferring to this time around.